when I look through some of the women's profiles, um, you had selfies in the car, selfies in the bathroom. I think, and I tell people all the time, you know, you're trying to attract the person that you are going to spend the rest of your life with. And it should be more intentional how you prepare, how do you present yourself? You, you know, women send better pictures in, you know, inter for interview processes or for college, you know, application and things like that. And so I think you should have that same level of intens intentionality and intensity because this person is the person that you are going to be yoked with. So how did you meet your husband? I say, I met myself first. Like I fell in love with myself. I met myself. I understood what my needs were. Um, and I understood it could be accountable for things that I've done in past. Relationships that weren't successful, it's so easy to blame somebody else as to why stuff doesn't work, but it's so healing and beneficial to understand your role in that, in that um, breakup. Um, but the other thing I say is that men do know um, and if a man is not showing you actively, you know, that he is very interested in you, um, then it is best for you to move on uh, just for your own level of sanity. Because a lot of women will say he wasted my time. And it's like, well, no, you you wasted your time. You, you allow someone to not be committal. Making sure you're choosing the right person. I think far too often we know when we we said it earlier, we said it earlier. We know, men, we know when we are really serious about the right one and the right one is gonna be that right one for us. And I think really, really heeding that call and saying, you know what, she is the one and I need to make a serious commitment to that one. What's up Brave Hearts community? This is Sean Heineman, your premier pre-engagement coach, back with another segment of It's Scary to Remarry, wanting you to love fearlessly. We have some special guests with us today. This power couple is phenomenal. I had a chance to see them on Instagram and a friend of mine reached out and said, you have to bring them on the show. And I was like, okay, <laughs> went to their profile, loved everything about them. And actually, I think I seen a video of them before and I was just like, wow. So to actually kind of see this come full circle and to actually get the interview is a blessing to me. This power couple can be found on Forbes, Oprah, ABC, BET, Black Enterprise, Bloomberg for their <laughs> business. There's so many. I mean, the list can go on and on for their, uh, their story of how they met. We're going to talk about that as well. And as far as their business and the books as well, because they're uh, published authors. So Brave Arts community, let's show some love to Tracy and Cherie Syfax. How are you both doing this evening? We're yeah. well, thank you. Yeah. Thank Great you for having us. So. <laughs> for sure. I love the content, love everything that you're both doing. Uh, I'm a fan. So oh, this, thank uh, you. Uh, we appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, so I'm I'm a I'm a fan out on this one. So <laughs> yeah. no, I, we all are um honored when people ask us to or invite us on their platform. So we definitely always appreciate that. Yes, for sure. I want to jump into this because I want to I honor your time. Can you both tell us your story, your love story, and how you both met? I love it, but to those who I might not have heard, can you share that story with us? Yeah, so I, I tell people, I, I'm Sharice Syfax, as you said. Um, I met my husband online during the pandemic. Uh, we were about a week two into the pandemic and I decided to go online and throw up a really great profile. I say, I said on 2020, I'm sales and marketing expert. If I can't sell and market myself, then, you know, I'm not that good at it, I guess. <laughs> um, so did a really nice profile, got a, nice hits. Um, and this gentleman right here uh, mm -hmm. also reached out to me. We started having conversations, uh, of course, online first because we were right smack dab in the very beginning of the pandemic. Um, ended up having our first in-person date on May 22nd of 2020. Um, and uh, six months later, seven months later, he proposed. And a year to the day, May 22nd of 2021, we were married. So that is how we met. Yes. Wow. I'll be a third year tomorrow. Wow. Congratulations. Thank Happy you. Anniversary. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. That's funny because I, I met my wife on Instagram and we married six months later. So 
Oh wow, that's amazing. Yes. When you know, you hey, know. Wait, hey, us men, when we know, hey, <laughs> and you know, and I used to coach women. I just don't have the time anymore um, because of all of our other business ventures. But that's one thing that I used to say. One, when people say, "Oh, how did you meet your husband?" I say, "I met myself first. Like I fell in love with myself. I met myself. I understood what my needs were, um, and I understood and could be accountable for things that I've done in the past." relationships that weren't successful it's so easy to blame somebody else as to why stuff doesn't work but it's so healing and beneficial to understand your role in that in that um breakup um but the other thing i say is that men do know um and if a man is not showing you actively you know that he is very interested in you um then it is best for you to move on uh just for your own level of sanity because a lot of women will say he wasted my time and it's like well no you you wasted your time you you allowed someone to not be committal Mm -hmm. um and you know so so i i really am into us being accountable for the experiences that we have because we can impact them um when we're confident in what it is that we who we are and what we desire Mm -hmm. i love that i love that and and I want to ask Tracy. So, how did you know? Like, when did it when did it click? Are you a content creator, YouTuber? Maybe you've interviewed someone on your video podcast, and they said something that was really really good, or maybe you said something that was really really good. Well, enter Opus Clips. This is the platform that I use when I want to share thirty to 60 second video clips that I can share with the whole world. I mean, you can share those clips on TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, uh, Instagram Reels, like these 30 to 60 second clips that Opus Clips can give to you with the click of a mouse. All you have to do is upload the recording and boom, Opus Clips within maybe 10 minutes will give you 15 to 25 different clips with description on the side of the video. And it also gives you like a title and it gives you a rating and lets you know how powerful that clip can be used on social media from a rating of 99 all the way down to maybe 60. This is a phenomenal platform that has took my social media marketing to another level. If you want to level up your social media game, Go in the description below right now and get the link for Opus Clips. This will not disappoint you. Um, well, it probably clicked on the first date. I mean, the first date was just completely, um, and she knows my love for language, so we had this discussion. So, um, you know, I kept telling her the first thing I wanted to do um, as we've been in the pandemic for months now, you know, once we get a chance to go out, I want to take you out to a nice dinner. And of course, you know, when restrictions was lifted, we couldn't go out to a restaurant. Um, so she actually brought the restaurant to her place where that she had the major D, she had the chef, she had the candlelight, she had the violinist in the corner playing music. So I think that one was the first one, Sean. <laughs> but everything after that, um, she is an amazing woman. She is simply an amazing woman. And as we said earlier, you know, us guys, we know, when we know, we know real and we know we know and you know I just knew as and we met during the pandemic so of course a lot of opportunity just to talk mm-hmm. and to um and to get to know each other via you know we did um we did zoom breakfast we did zoom movies comedy shows together we just watched them at the same time so we had a great opportunity um to spend some us time together to really get to know each other so um when the pandemic actually lifted I mean, everything else, you know, from the time she had the um, the dinner at her place, I mean, that whole summer, it was, yes, it was like a whirlwind for me. Wow. I love it. Because a lot of times, guys, like you say, we know, and people, you know, a lot of times guys can't waste your time. Yes, you absolutely. Know. And vice versa. I think vice versa, too. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I agree. Mm-hmm. I agree. I was looking at some of your videos and of course on the Instagram and I came across about, I came across the the video. It's like a snippet on dating profiles. And (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> I would like to know from from both of your vantage point because y'all met online, obviously. What do you think are some of the biggest mistakes that people make when it comes to their dating profiles online? Oh, wow. let me kick this off. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> he was the he was the online dating expert. Yeah, yes. so I I had been through this. So I was basically I was I had been online. I um because of what I do, I could exclusively date it. And um, they go online, you know, before I, as I actually met um, women. So you get to see different people profiles, um, some profiles with the cap leather. I don't need no man. I don't need, I mean, I, I mean, trauma just oozing out of somebody's profile what they actually <laughs> write. So it was like, you know, you kind of, you can read, you can read someone's profile. Um, I like Cherise. Cherise was just completely opposite of that. Um, she talked about the great person she was, the fun she likes to have, all the things almost inviting someone to come into her world versus someone, you know, saying, it, I mean, I read, unbelievable, I could write a book on some of the stuff that um, <laughs> online that you go through on a dating scene. So, and, you know, and, and the whole thing of meeting online is that you meet, do meet someone that's authentic. You know what I mean? Meeting someone out at a bar, club and stuff like that, you know, you meet, you know, there representative for a little while and that takes time i mean online between you know reading the profile understanding who the person is before you actually reach out to them you at least have some sense of what you're getting into because in the club is like hi how you doing the next thing you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> you went on you all in <laughs> what, what, um, what about you Sheree? yeah i would say a couple things so i had the uh ability because we both were getting off the platform once we committed to each other and for some reason Tracy couldn't get off so he was like I don't know what's wrong why do I keep you know why I keep getting these notifications so we went on his um profile together because I think you had to get off on the computer like you couldn't get off on the app uh, and so we had to look you know they keep you they keep you in mm -hmm. so we went on his on his computer and when I look through some of the women's profiles, um, you had selfies in the car, selfies in the bathroom. I think, and I tell people all the time, you know, you're trying to attract the person that you are going to spend the rest of your life with. And it should be more intentional how you prepare, how do you present yourself? You, you know, women send better pictures in, you know, inter for interview processes or for college, you know, application and things like that. And so I think you should have that same level of intense intentionality and intensity because this person is the person that you are going to be yoked with that's going to really impact your life in a very um, big way. And so as such, I believe put your best foot forward. So that's the one thing I always say, take amazing pictures, different angles, full body, but, you know, out and about, um, you know, just really showing a person who you are. That's the first thing. The second thing is um, I see, a, I would see a lot of, I'm looking for a man who does this, or I don't want that. Or, I mean, I've even seen women that says, if you, you know, don't have STDs, like we're adult, like we know that we're going to get to that, or at least we should ultimately get to that conversation. You don't want to be that off-putting from the gate, in my opinion. Um, you want to give people an opportunity to have conversations. And so that, to me, that just, to Tracy's point, kind of screams a little bit of, I've been hurt before, or I'm trying to protect myself. And I think that energy then attracts people that will take advantage of that or will cue into that. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think for me, the way I, you know, have worked with women on profiles and did my profile myself, it was more of like, this is who I am. Do you want to participate in my life? You know, is, is it, am I interesting enough for you to want to have, um, you know, some curiosity about mm -hmm. what we can do together? And so um, I, I was very successful online from a standpoint of met some really great quality people um, and had some really, really good, good experiences until, you know, up until and through when I met Tracy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I love it. Yeah, because someone asked me about, what what's wrong with my dating profile and and it really wasn't my thing but j just with doing the coaching and stuff like that and ladies i can't find a man and i said well let's see your 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 profile mm -hmm. and she just had a straight face she was just like right <laughs> right right there is nothing about that 
<laughs> straight face. I was like, we can start there. Yeah. <laughs> straight Absolutely. face. Yeah. So I was like, oh my God. Yeah. So I thought that question, because there's so many people that ask about that. Uh, great answers, by the way. Tracy, I, I want to ask you, uh, what are what are three mistakes you see single men make when dating? Hmm. Um, I think number one is um, not committed. You know, I think, you know, you know, a lot of young men, especially growing up the way I grew up with uncles who, you know, was out there, uh, cousins who was out there, you know, they kind of how many women you had, you know, basically to talk about, you know, where, where you stood in your manhood. Mm -hmm. And a lot of us continue that on into the day. So I think number one is um, trying to, you know, be committed. Yeah, you know I mean, saying that, okay, this is who I'm going to date right now and being upfront. And even if you want to date multiple women, yeah, you know I mean, being upfront about that, I think that right there puts a lot of things um, um, to rest. I think number two, number two would be, um, number two, I would think, dating a woman that you know is crazy. <laughs> I mean, because we do that. We do that. Come on, we get all the warmest. We get all the warm inside. Keep it real. Keep it real. Right. And, what train wreck. and I and I knew that and, and I actually dated someone who um who prior to um meeting Cherie um displayed that. And she was nice woman, nice, I mean very, very nice woman. And then one day she was like, You liking her pictures and you trying to fuck uh, F her. I was like, <laughs> Oh, I'm like, I'm, 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 six, I'm 60, 59, I'm 58 years old. I'm like, it's like culture shock. So that right there, and typically 20 years ago, 30 years ago, I would just ignore that because she was nice looking, she was decent. She, I mean, she, she had all the other qualities. I would have just ignored that 20, 30 years ago. Um, but I could not ignore that at 58, you know what I mean, years old. It's just, just, just couldn't do it. So I think number one is, uh, number two would be eating those um those warning signs when we see them. Um, number three, wow, number three, and you gotta excuse me because I was not prepared for the three, but I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna get you number three. Oh, number three, okay. number three has to be um, hmm, making sure you're choosing the right person. I think far too often we know when we, as we said it earlier, we said it earlier, we know. Men, we know when we are really serious about the right one and the right one is going to be that right one for us. And I think really, really heeding that call and saying, you know what? She is the one and I need to make a serious commitment to that one. Mm -hmm. I think that would have to be uh, probably number three. Mm, that's good. That's good. Sheree, what do you think are three mistakes single women make when dating? Ooh. Um, I think the they're not necessarily in priority order, yeah. but mm -hmm. one is that we we date and the first person we date or the first person that we halfway like, we already are married to them in our head. It's like we've already gone down that road. And so we're already showing possessiveness and some jealousy and some things like that. Um, I know for me, I had to change that up. So when I uh, just started dating Tracy, I, I, it was rotational. Like I was dating him and other people, but I was, to his point, I was very vocal about that. And I was very upfront about that. Um, and I always just felt that the person that was for me was going to rise to the top, which he did. Um, but in the past, I would have, and, and I'd say I would have messed it up because I would have been so clingy to him because I really, really liked him from the beginning. And if I didn't um, have things to kind of just keep my attention and things like that, then I would have been super clingy and needy and all that stuff. So I say that I think women do that a lot. The other thing is not having fulfillment in their own life. So even, it may not be a need to rotate them, date, but you just don't even have enough stuff going on so that you're relying on them all the time to kind of be your completion, so to speak. Mm -hmm. so, you, know, you know, what are you doing with yourself? Are you in school? Do you go to Pilates? Do you have really healthy relationships with your girlfriends or family members? Do you spend time alone? Do you do self-care? Something that isn't constantly requiring that the man kind of pour into you because again I think that can come off as you know being needy 
Mm-hmm. And then um, the last one I would say just for this three is back to comment that I made earlier is about a lot of times just how we reassess um, what happened in the past. Are we like, oh, he did this and he did that versus, you know, in all my relationships, I, I stayed too long. I knew it wasn't right. I was staying for the wrong reasons, whether it was financially healthy or whether I, I it made more sense for us to stay together than not, whether what it looked like on the outside because he had this job or just, you know, the things. So just being really, really honest with self about some of our own, um, our own um, contributions to the lack of successful relationships that we've had in the past. Mm-hmm. I like it. I like it. I was, how do you both manage marriage and running business together? How, what is, how do you uh, keep it going? How do you work together? Like, uh, cause there's a lot of people who inquire about this, uh, especially you got people who, you know, they're content creators and they're married, they got kids and all those things. So from a business perspective, how do you make your, your marriage thrive and still be able to, uh, to create a thriving business as well. And, and you know, because we, we run multiple businesses, we, mm-hmm. you know, run a restaurant that's open seven days a week, uh, 50 employees. Uh, we have an ed tech company that teaches entrepreneurship in prisons in New Jersey, juvenile and adult prisons. Um, we have a real estate development company. We own multiple properties between New Jersey and Philadelphia. So we do a lot. We, we definitely do a lot. I think the way we make it work um, is that men should really lean into each other's strength. Um, she is way hyper focused on other areas that I am just not hyper focused on, mm-hmm. and I think that and there's other things that I am more you know hyper focused on than than she is not. So I think between both of our strengths, um, we lean into that and, and let each other do what we do. Um, I think that has worked for us because you know. We're in business and we're in business seven days a week and it doesn't, it really doesn't stop, but we kind of make it stop actually, actually just 20 minutes before we came in, we was out on our date night to the convertible, rode up to Princeton, <laughs> went to dinner and we had just got back 20 minutes before we hopped over here. So I think having um, a life that is constantly doing that, mm-hmm. I think making sure that we are spending our time together um, well, whether it was working out yesterday together or, or riding up to prison with the day together, I think mm-hmm. making sure we're keeping and doing those things no matter how busy uh, we get, I think is important. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think for um, me, I would I would definitely agree with what Tracy just said. Um, it's probably, you know, when we first got married, we were online a lot talking about just kind of that whole finding your maid and how, you, how we did that and all that. And, you know, as I think about whether or not we should go back into um, having a bigger online presence again, um, because it has been an adjustment, you know. So, you know, I had a corporate you know, job. I was a director in the medical device industry. Tracy uh, was uh, did more of his uh, development, flipping houses, building and all that other stuff. In fact, he built our house. That was the last kind of thing he did before he retired. So we coming out of the pandemic have very different, a very different dynamic. And then we bought our restaurant um, and that just shifted mm-hmm. everything. I mean, he had always been an entrepreneur, yeah. but I don't corporate. So now, you know, I don't work in corporate anymore, mm-hmm. um, which is great. I mean, I'm fortunate that we have the ability, you know, for me to be able to do that. But there was a little bit of identity that I did have with that structure. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, now it's your own business and, you know, the investment we made to buy the business. So there's like this intensity around like, you know, the finances and all this other stuff. But where I think we've done a really good job is to trace this point at moments it, you know, just kind of like it stretched us, but ultimately appreciating the differences that we bring to our business. And that's really what makes us successful because we do, uh, we, I think we have similar strength as far as where we're trying to go. So back to some of the mistakes people make, not knowing enough about where they're trying to go in the future so that they align with the partner mm-hmm. that gets there. So we always know what the goal is. There's a point in time where we're going to you know, shut it down and live our lives a different way. There's a, 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 a certain amount we want to leave to our children. And, you know, like we, we are really aligned when it comes to that. So we know ultimately when it gets frustrating, that's the 
the goal, Absolutely. right? And we're both on that same page. Um, but it's also, again, the things that, Tracy just kind of said it tonight, the things that I get all this nervous about are the things that keep our businesses, you know, I'm intense when it comes to our business. I'm not, I'm not mess around. And it does want to get on this nerves. But it's like, but our stuff is together. You know what yeah. I mean? And knows, right? for him, like he knows how to go out and just do certain things that, it's like, oh, I wish he did it this way. But, you know, it's, it's really, really handled. I don't have to worry about the stuff that's in his lane. So it's really giving each other grace and space um, and respecting each other's lanes. Yeah. 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 And I think, too, um, and you got to look at, they always say, you know, opposite attract. And I think in business, it kind of works real good because, you know, she's, he's, she's West Coast. I'm East Coast. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, she's um, she's corporate. I'm thirty year entrepreneur. Um, she's I'm from the block. She's block adjacent. So <laughs> yeah, I mean, all those all those things kind of kind of work together um, to help us. I think be successful. I don't think you can run multiple businesses and do what we do um, seven days a week if you don't have that type of um, almost that type of energy meeting together in order to make sure that you're covering every single aspect of your life, whether it's work, wellness, health, well, all yeah. those things. Yeah. Um, I think you, those, those differences really um, has been a strength for us. Yeah. Yes. And another thing that was really, really important is something that, you know, Tracy had learned from previous relationships and not talking about his faith. And I think at our foundation, mm -hmm we both have, like, we're really clear on our faith. Now, you know, we may have a little bit of differences on kind of how we, you know, organized religious has impacted me in a certain way and has that impacted him very differently. Yes. Um, but at the end of the day, we both have a very strong faith mm -hmm. and we really can rely and lean on that too. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's good. Faith is, is very important. Yeah, in times when it really gets like, whew, you know, mm -hmm. so it's hard, you know, if you date someone who is, Atheist, you know, just doesn't mm -hmm. believe the way you believe, mm -hmm. you know, because you both need to kind of like, you know, hunker down and kind of like focus on a, a common and shared belief. Yes, mm -hmm. that's good. And this uh, last question What is the biggest hurdle? What was the biggest hurdle in your marriage and how did you overcome it? Huh. I don't know if we have big hurdles. Big hurdles are big. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so I don't think we have big hurdles. Or, or any, just any, think. any, yeah, just especially for those who are watching or listening. Mm -hmm. people can yeah, so I, I would say, and it's not, a, it wasn't necessarily a big hurdle. I think it was worked out because communication, we communicate, but Tracy was married for like 30 years um, before we got together. Divorced for a while, but um, and we live in, you know, we spend, now we're split, split time between uh, here and where our business is in Philadelphia, but I moved from Philadelphia to live in this, the small town that he, his family is, his family, his ex-wife's family, like in, the, in, the, in a very um, communal, which is great, and now it's amazing, but but early on, A, coming into it in a pandemic where I'm, you know, we're all by ourselves. And then when we kind of come out of it, I'm feeling a little bit like I'm kind of the odd man out a little bit because everybody knows him and the ex and the family is like, I don't know if it's his family, her family, like just trying to navigate some of that. And what I will say um, is that for the most part, everybody was really welcoming. Um, but you had people who weren't. And so just trying to like, you know, navigate that, hey, you know, you can love us both. You know, you can, um, you know, just- You don't have to choose. You don't have to choose, right. You don't have to choose. Um, and so it could have been worse for sure. And it wasn't. I mean, I think part of that had to do with, I just was like, hey, you know, I can choose to stay on the sidelines or I can choose to get in the game. And I said, you know, I want to talk to, you know, his ex-wife and just talk about how, we, I, I envision us together now, like we are family, we have grandkids together, like you know, and all those things. And so, it's, I believe, it's really, really beautiful. Tracy has a very strong relationship with his ex mother in law, and I would never, you know, do anything to compromise that because there was times, you know, I don't know how much of Tracy's background you read up on, but Tracy was in and out of prison, drug addicted, and she was a very stable factor at those times. So, I had to be mature and recognize. 
um, how impactful those people were in his lives and not like, well, I'm the new wife and you can't yeah. do X, Y, or Z. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, so that probably, it probably could have been a bigger hurdle, mm -hmm. but, and it may not have been as big of a hurdle as Tracy, maybe, because there were times when I was like, hey, you know, this person is not going to treat me this way just because, you know, they're being petty and small-minded, so I need you to have a conversation with them. So I don't know how comfortable he was with that, but um, there were some times when it was just kind of like me just trying to figure out how I fit in mm -hmm. um, that didn't always feel comfortable because where I come from, you know, on the West Coast, like my family embraced him, you know, and there wasn't that those long relationships where people had to feel like they had to choose sides. It was like, you love him and he's family to us. Um, so when I compared that feeling, I didn't, I didn't get that all the time from the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, and it took time. But 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 we're there, and so that's been a good thing. Mm, I love it. That's not that's beautiful because uh, that can be challenging. I've been through a divorce. I was married fourteen, almost fifteen years, and you know, remarried and stuff like that. So I I get it. Mm -hmm. uh, totally get it. Yeah, uh, and we talk about you know, especially when there's kids involved and grandkids, and mm -hmm. you know, you're now talking about you know, really a blended family, and that's where you said you know, what I mean, making the playing list, and graduations. You know, my, my oldest daughter just had a grandson. Her just had a grand uh, uh, a granddaughter not too long ago also. So those things are happening. And they're going to happen. Graduations, weddings, they're going to happen between this blended family. So it's important that, yes, you know, that we uh, communicate and make sure that we have a solid foundation. And Sheree had, had definitely uh, made sure that happened from the beginning by having those conversations with my wife. Um, personally, took out the dinner. You know, I mean, yeah. people, I mean, people know that your new wife take your ex-wife out to dinner. You know, but <laughs> make sure that you know she's 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 making those connections. And say, listen, hey, we're here, we're married, we're gonna be together for a long time, and we need to make this work. And listen, we were just at my mother who just came home on hospice. You know, with me, her, my ex-wife, my daughter, my aunts. You know, what I mean, it's mm -hmm. we are family now, and there's no use of making sure that. It doesn't, anything outside of that um, doesn't happen. So for sure, she has done a great job with that. Yeah, that's awesome. I love it. This has been a phenomenal episode. Thank you so much both uh, for your time. Uh, can you let everyone know how they can get in touch with you? Can you tell us about the businesses, uh, the <laughs> books, uh, yeah, let's, <laughs> everything? Let's, let's, let's talk about it. Yeah, so online, you can find us at Just Facts on um, Instagram, J-U-S-T-P-H-A-X. Everywhere else, we're Cherie and Tracy Syfax. So Syfax is S-Y-P-H-A-X. Um, if you are ever in Philadelphia, come to Booker's Restaurant and Bar, 5021 Baltimore. We're in West Philadelphia in the University City area near Penn and all those great colleges. Um, we, Like Tracy said, we were open seven days a week, 10 to 10. Um, and Any day you roll out of bed. Come for the food and stay for the vibe. We are definitely the premier restaurant restaurant in West Philadelphia. I'm very proud of that. Um, and then Tracy has a book from the block to the boardroom. And you can go to www.tracysyfax.com. I have a book called Second Act, Living Life Boldly and Abundantly at Every Age. So I talk about my journey of, of attracting my husband and this life that we have. And you can find that on our site, Just The Facts, J-U-S-T, T-H-E-P-H-A-X.com or secondactbook.com. So Mm -hmm. all the things yeah. but if you google us you can find us trust me <laughs> yeah for sure yeah yeah y'all can be found yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, for sure. I will have everything linked up in the description below. So, you know, they just can click the link. Uh, thanks again for your time. Brave Hearts community, you heard it here. Make sure you go. If you're in Philly, go to the website, go get the books, everything, because I only bring the best on the show.